these people <laughs> i was like i'm not doing it i barely made it to this thing i don't blame you and you look so good without makeup anyway oh, thanks <laughs> uh, how are you doing i'm all right i'm okay i just i took a nap because i needed nice. a nap and it's just been one of those lazy days like i woke up early though because i was trying to be productive mm-hmm but I had a blockage, so I wasn't as productive as I wanted to be. But I'm okay, other than that. I'm that was okay. me last night, actually. What you described was me before <laughs> I went to bed. I was, like, trying to be productive, and it just wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? We put me to bed. Basically. I put myself to bed. <laughs> That's it. Woke up and woke up slightly renewed, so I'm better. That's good. It's been, okay. it's been a tough... I don't even know what to put after that. Like a part of me is like, it's been a tough week. It's been a tough month. It's been a tough year. It's been a tough millennia. Like there is, <laughs> I'm always just like, it's been a tough period. <laughs> it's been a tough, like even last night. I mean, I, I was hanging out with a friend and everything was good. And then it was like, I got home, found out about our, our King passing away. Yes. And was just like, <laughs> how much more can we take? Mm. How much more can we take as Black people? It's, so we got to find our joys when we can. The facts. Yeah, I didn't find out until this morning. And I was like, Mm -hmm. well, that's weird because I literally watched 21 Bridges last night, not knowing. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. I think it it affected all of us more too. I mean, it already is going to affect all of us. But then because like knowing that he was sick, and did all these mm-hmm. movies mm-hmm. while be like <sighs> seven? What do you do? Seven movies a while? Seven mm-hmm. movies mm-hmm. going from stage three to stage four. I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, kudos to you. And like, I have relatives that have gone through it, but and watching them go through it, I just can't imagine getting up and filming, like, especially when I feel, like looking at Black Panther and seeing like the stunts and the just different things like that. I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. It, I know. It's crazy. It is. It's, that was a lot. I mean, granted, I didn't have to, I think I was blessed because I didn't, I know I was blessed because I didn't have to do chemo or radiation. So to know that he did those things and still did his normal, normal, but also, I give kudos to the people that knew that didn't say yes. anything. I was like, oh, you got yes. a good tribe. <laughs> You're so right. I thought the same thing. I was like, yo, kudos to them doctors, to like anesthesiologists, the nurses, like everyone just keeping it under wraps because four years? <laughs> four years and no one knew? Damn, who knows if people just minded their business and kept their mouths closed? Mm-hmm. We wouldn't know. Or if they signed agreements. I was like, I wonder if they signed something for this. Like, I just. Probably. Maybe. Because he didn't, like, we didn't even know, like, oh, yeah, he had can't. Like, we didn't know nothing. So they probably did. Man. It's. 2020. I just. (laughs) That's it exactly. You gotta laugh it off. That's all you can do. Like, what else can you do? There's no, there's, I don't even have any more tears to give. Like, it's just, it has to be laughter. It's so crazy. This year has been so crazy. Oh, man. So. Yeah, we already started. All this is already. I know. (laughs) I guess we got to back up so you can tell them, tell the people who you are, what you do, why you do it, all that jazz. True. Okay. I'm Andy Noir. Um, I kind of do a bit of everything, but I got my podcast and is that, and it's basically talking about just us, a part of the diaspora. Cause I felt like, and I'm sure you felt the same with your podcast was we never got to hear us. Like I would hear about people in the Caribbean living in the Caribbean and everything they had to go through and, and news and stuff like that. But I realized all my friends across the diaspora, whether we lived in the U.S., 
in Canada, in the UK, we had this commonality and we never really got to talk about the things that we went through. Mm -hmm. So I started my podcast uh, just to have a place that other people can listen and feel like, oh my God, I went through that too. Like I'm not alone. And uh, yeah, and is that. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start? Um, I actually started the end of last year. Okay. Yeah, I started the end of last year. And then the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> and I then started the- in January and I was like, I don't remember when I started listening to yours. I was like, oh, she's so good at editing. Like you have all the little sound. I think I tried it once. I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. And I don't it know if I want to work. I want to continue. <laughs> it is a lot of work. You know what? I'm lucky that I'm lucky that like I had friends and dated people that were into like um, DJing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That I have a little like little tips and tricks to like throw things in. But yeah, it is a lot of work. But like, can I just to... It's it's that, and it's also our culture. Like I feel like all culture really is about like the sound effects, the little noises. Like it helps. It adds. Can't to do it. it like we do it. Like really and truly, it people adds can't to do the it story. Like it's so true. Even even in our music, like you don't hear a brap brap or a wheel. Like is the song even that important? Was it? Even <laughs> <that> important? <laughs> And have it start again. (laughs) That's how I feel. Is it even important? Was it a good song if you didn't get a wheel? Or you don't hear a pull up? Like you have to hear some sound effect. But then when I was doing it right, I was like, oh, let me not do too much. Because I have those friends that um, are annoyed by an over saturated. Yes. You know, music session with a lot of drops. (laughs) I feel like it's a spectrum. Like you, you have to work, you can't go to Swiss beats and have sound effects every two seconds, like whistles and horns and sirens and traffic lights. And people just feel like they're in New York. Like they just feel like they're chilling and hearing a whole bunch of noise. You got, it's a spectrum. You got to find your point. Cause I get that. I do understand, especially when you get a mixtape or a mix CD back in the day. this This is me showing my age. Um, <laughs> it's fun. This, this is good. This is a question I have for you. Ooh. Before you even start that, right? So, one of the que- this is a very weird podcast. I think you have questions for me. I have yeah. questions for you. One of them was like, where did you go back in the day to find soca music in the '90s and early 2000s? But in Canada, right? Yes, I'm in Canada. But the thing is, what people don't realize. Like, I'm in Toronto, brap, brap, shout out T-Dot. Um, we have a huge Caribbean population. So I didn't have to go far. I mean, I had friends that were DJs. They were doing parties. Um, and I would get my music from them. Or again, I'm Trini. We went back every year. So usually I'd be like, all right, carnival time. I know I'm going to get my music. But when it came to hearing music from other islands, it was really about the people around me here in Toronto and the DJs having their stuff and and I don't know if it's the same for you but like once we have our carnival um in August the first weekend of August so you know people are coming up from the yeah. U.S. and all that so that was the best time for me to get my soca music until until we got bigger and now we can actually like bigger and like having the internet where we can buy stuff online but I, mostly my mixtapes were my DJ friends to be like, yo, you got, you got to hear this fire dude out of Grenada, <laughs> Bridgen. Yo, me, you have to hear this Virgin out of Vinci. And I'd be like, okay, I'll listen to this. And yeah, uh, yeah. I miss mixtapes ta- mix though. Yeah, I used to get mine. Um, so I'm from Dorchester, Massachusetts. And we used to have this place, this area is called Codman Square, very hood. And um, I used to just go into one of the stores that sell, sold random things and they would have like the display case full of soca mix CDs. Mm-hmm. And so that, and then you spend your time looking at the back where the majority of them would have the same thing, the little bootleg uh, covers on the front without oh, enough ink from photo- the printer. <laughs> Photocopied cover. <laughs> exactly. So there was that, that was like the early 2000s. And then sometimes like the only official CDs that you would be able to find in like a Strawberry or uh, what other stores that we have back? Tower Records or something like that would be like 
soca gold or reggae gold and yes that was it i never like buying them though because it was always like it felt wrong it did i felt like it was put out more for people who like don't listen to soca regularly the american don't listen to reggae regularly Mm because it would have like the hits of that year but it wouldn't have the songs that would have us bent over and whining no 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 okay are you i have a question for you are you more, you probably already answered this, but are you more a pretty mask girl or a juve girl? That's hard. Um, yeah. I'm going to probably... <gasps> Depends <laughs> on my, my wallet. No, I would say... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> Depends on the wallet because finances matter, okay? I think Juve start. I think Juve was the initial first love, um, because yeah, the Boston Carnival that used to be basically free, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, no, I think there's a certain, there's a certain, um, just freeness, right? That comes, that comes with that. Nobody, anybody who's there, like you came, you should have come, right, for a reason. So everybody's usually like ready, you know. Exactly. Nobody's gonna be stush. Nobody's gonna be you know, worried about what's falling off and feathers yeah. this and feathers that. So I think, yeah, probably Juve. Juve yeah. girl? Yeah. I'm down with that. Um, yeah. I, I feel like, I, I, know, I know what you mean too. Like when I was younger, definitely all Juve girl, especially cause <laughs> Juve had the men. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Juve had the men. But mm-hmm. as I got, like, yeah, as you get older and you're able to afford things a bit more there's there is something about putting on a pretty costume that fits mm-hmm. you great, makes you feel sexy and going all out on the road so yeah. but i think deep down yeah i'm a i'm a juve girl too so shout out to the juve girls <laughs> so a lot of the questions that i have are about the growing up um and how we you know what the pieces of our childhood that we loved and then the pieces that we could do without um so like randomly what's one popular caribbean food item that you ate a lot growing up that you absolutely refuse to eat today cool I can't think of something that like I ate growing up that I would refuse. Or that a lot of people like that you don't, that you feel like would like remove your, your, your Caribbean card. Okay. Actually, it's funny you said that because I had this conversation with someone <laughs> a few days ago. It would definitely be red mango. I realize I'm going to get my Trini. Oh my God. Provoked. But I was never a fan of red mango. <laughs> Wow. I know. I know. And and it even got to a point where I remember being a kid and my, like, you know, the one relative that comes back and brings all the food. And everyone was just like, I was like, no, I, I don't need the red mango. And I remember everyone just, it, it was also like the whole thing got quiet. And my mother was like, I really don't know who Childless is. You know, I don't know who Childless is, but you know, like red mango. Like, people were upset with me for that. So, But why? Like, what is it? I don't have, I don't understand. (laughs) Okay. I'm a very lazy person. Okay. Okay. For me, red mango is just, it's a, it's a lot that I have to do. And then my fingers are sticky afterwards. I'm going to have to go wash them. I feel like I got to think about red mango. I know it it sounds crazy, but for me, I'm just like, if I could pop it in my mouth and I don't got to worry about cleaning anything or quick and easy. Cool. Red mango was very like a, you had to have a love of messiness, I feel like. Like, red mango is one of those things that you're going to get all over your face and your lips. You're going to be sucking this part of your face if you have a little bit of juice here. Like, it's and peeling off the mango and all that. Yeah. Um, I know. The yellow is different. <sighs> is it just mangoes, period? It's mostly mangoes, period. But, like, mangoes, if they're cut up, I'm good. It's cut fine, it up right? for me? I'm fine with it, but like me having to peel and eat it myself, like, no, no, 
yeah, I'm definitely getting my citizenship revoked now. Mm. So. Mm, that yeah, I wasn't expecting that one. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's Vienna sausages. Vienna sausages. You know what? I never. Do, don't you feel like Vienna sausages have the taste of the actual tin? It has like a like it actually tastes like the the tin actually came off in the Vienna sausage. Right? Because there? you don't know how long it's been in there. Okay. That's pretty much what it is. No, it's like that Vienna sausage has probably been in there for 200 years. That's why you're tasting the taste of the tin. I don't know how we, like, cold Vienna sausage right out the tin with some crackers right now <laughs> is grossing me out. Or the Vienna sausage that you should make, like, you put a little tomato paste and onion, they try to jazz and it, fry it up. And No, mm-hmm. I can't. The thing with Vienna sausage is I feel like no matter what you do to it, it tastes exactly the same. <laughs> That's what I didn't understand. Like everything, exactly what you described with the tomato and the onion, all that would taste good. The actual sausage just Nothing. tasted exactly the same as if you just took it out of the tin. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm yeah. with you on Vienna sausages. They are- like I walk past now in the aisle. I'm like, why, one by one, why are we still making this? And number two is just like an instant- Just brings back those memories. Right. Ugh. Anyway. For me, I'm just like, once you try like real proper sausage, if you are a person that eats it, but once you try real proper sausage, Vienna sausage is just, it's rude. It's disrespectful. It's like, it's made for someone who's lower class and I'm trying to rise up in levels. Yeah, like, blow up. It's not. Ooh, a- yeah. I feel you on Vienna sausage. Thank you. I don't feel you on mangoes, but we'll- I know. I, yeah, just no. stick to the Trader Joe's Whole Foods pre-cut. Exactly. Or like- what the spoiled person in me my mother literally would cut up my mango oh that's sweet i loved her for it but yeah yeah but every but i eat so many other things <laughs> so and the good thing is at least anyone who dates me or is friends with me knows if i buy you red mango you're gonna get your red mango girl mm. you will get mm-hmm. it you will never have to worry about wait didn't didn't she say she was buying me five packs there's only right. my two in here no you'll get your red mango <laughs> respectable it's respectable um i don't know about you but there were certain things in the house as a child that myself and many others had well i didn't we didn't have it our parents had it so which of these caribbean decor pieces did you play with the most as a child okay the animal figurines mm-hmm. or the beaded room dividers? Who, okay, this is gonna sound crazy, but my mother had neither of those. Really? Because she grew up in a house with figurines and always had to be careful of them. She yes. was like, I'm never having a house with figurines. Yes. So it's funny because I would go to other Caribbean people's houses and they're like, oh, you must have this. And I'm like, no, my mom. <laughs> It got to your mom. Um, So definitely the bead dividers. Mm. Um, And also I would get in trouble for moving the art. So, you know, all of us had like some form of Caribbean art. You had the African woman with the water basin (laughs) or carrying something on her head. And (laughs) I would try to move them to my room, especially because, you know, growing up Cosby show, I was like, they got art in their room. I'm gonna have art in my room. So I actually got in trouble a lot for moving art. (laughs) Just... I don't know why I didn't think someone would notice the wall has nothing on it. Mm, but, mm-hmm. but definitely the bead divider is probably I played with the most. Yeah. Mm. We didn't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of art. We had maps, like we had a Turks and Caicos map. It's really and a lot of pictures, like yes. a ridiculous amount of pictures. Um, I probably played with the figurines the most. It, the thing was there was no trend. You know, there was a rooster over here, a dog. I remember there was a big ass dog, but it was a piggy bank. And then some cats. I'm just like, what are we doing? You what know, like we, I, there's no there's no cohesion with with Caribbean decorating. Okay. It's just a whole bunch of stuff and we hope you like it. And if you don't, you don't need to come over anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's just you're just supposed to accept it how it is. Yeah. I I never understood it. We, my mother never did the plastic, though. Not the plastic. I didn't either. My mom was like, sofas. we're living on this furniture. <laughs> this is living. Like, you just like, have to mind what you do and how you behave. Exactly. 
Exactly, exactly. But yeah, we didn't have the plastic. Um, we had a lot of plants, though. We had the lots of plants. Didn't have that. We didn't have the spoons. I don't know if you had, when I was growing up, my aunts would have the, the decorative spoons of like different islands they went to and like mm-hmm, each would I have see. a spoon. And I tried to do that myself, but I did it with shot glasses because don't nobody want no tiny little spoons. No. I never even understood what they were for. Like, what were they for? Ice cream? Like Nothing. They're for... They're for literally look. just decorative. Okay. Yeah. But I try to get a shot glass at least from every island I go to. So. My thing was aprons. When I was traveling, yes. I would get aprons. Don't know what happened to them. Um, but like Barbados... I have one. I think I got one when I went to Grenada. Like that, I'm like, you know, I could use these, right? They're yeah. not going to just go to waste. They also sit, do or a, just sit there. Just yeah. Like, I think it was messing me up though because some of them weren't really flowing in terms of looks when I hung them up. But I'm like, you got to get past. <laughs> you got to get past it. But I know those when you're like, I wanted it. No, but I wanted to have the this mm-hmm. part showing properly. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get that yeah. um, did you ever have a phase where you just dressed in your colors I feel like, mm. the like flag? From your, yeah from your island no because I don't really like them okay. like I'm not a red I don't really like red um, because I was I didn't wear yellow because I felt I was in my whole insecure dark chocolate phase and I didn't want to wear bright colors. And not, yeah. and it's not even just you, like for the longest time, that's what people told us. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of black people I know grew up thinking you can't wear yellow or you can't wear this color. So, yeah. yeah. So no, I didn't have that. I didn't have that phase. I actually repped Bahamas for a little bit because I couldn't find Turks and Caicos stuff. Uh, and they were the closest thing to Turks. Like, you know, they're like our cousins. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just, since I got family over there, I'm just going to rep 242. So I think I did that in my tweens. Ah. And then I came out of it. I was like, this ain't right. I wasn't big on wanting to wear colors. Because like you said, red was, I always felt like red was a come look at me color. Mm-hmm like notice me and I was very insecure when I was younger so I was like I'm not wearing a color to notice me um but I always got bought like a lot of Trini stuff (laughs) that I think people thought I should all wear together because I remember one time like I got a especially when we were in uh when soccer was really big for us and so I got the Trini jersey and then got a set of pants and a belt and my mom was like why aren't you wearing them like They'll be worn separately, not yeah. all together. Like, it's not, it's not that serious. It's really not. See, someone tried to come for me on Instagram one time because I did have this post where I said that, I forgot how I worded it, but it was basically like, your maximum, you're only allowed in my book, two, three things max, right? Because you'll go to Carnival and you'll see someone, you have a hat on, you'll have the scarf, you'll have the arm sleeve, you'll have the shirt, and none of them are working together right it's not a set the fadedness of some of them is just i'm like why can we just pick faded they're wearing a net jersey with lint on it i mean (laughs) like we know you're repping but come on we get it the the joke is and nine times out of ten they already have the flag tied on their head with of course they've positioned the country name correctly over your forehead so i know where you're from I, and that's the first thing I was looking at, your face. I don't need to see the rest of your body dressed in the colors. I understand that you're proud. We're all proud of our islands, but yeah. like, tone it down a little. I agree with you. No more than three. And even that three is questionable. <laughs> but but there to be spaced out accordingly in my book, you know? Yes. Definitely. I don't know who came for you, but they're wrong. De- that is definitely. Just, like, they, they said something like, be nice or something. I'm like, I am, but like, I'm just trying to help. Like, it's just not... I mean, I don't know what they're going for, so I mean, who am I? But maybe they, they're trying to be extra on purpose. But I, just, I don't understand. Like, are you trying to tell us what country you're from? Because we get it. <laughs> we get it. And the people who don't get it still won't get it. Like, you wearing all of Jamaica is not going to make somebody go, oh, wait a second. Now I know. It's Jamaica. Like, don't. I agree with you on that one. Thank you. 
what what was your least favorite chore during holiday traditions? Um, making drinks. So Mobby, Sorrel, mm -hmm. any of those things, because I just felt like the best Caribbean food takes the longest amount of time. Like I don't, even black cake, like why does black cake take a whole year for you to be starting? It's just, I want it now. <laughs> I want it right now. I don't want it in a year from now. I want it now. And the, and all the preparations that like your mother's trying to show, even for Mobby and Sorrel, I'd be like, so is it done yet? No, it's still at the sit down. So, what? <laughs> I want it now. I want it now. So what's this in the lard container? Dusty raisins. Nice raisins, we just, just shake. Or like, they'd send you to do something. They'd be like, you see that Johnny counter? Go and shake it up. Okay. <laughs> What's this? Oh, just some raisin and tang for the black cake for Christmas. And you're like, Christmas? It's March. Like, what are, we're shaking things up in March? It's just, it's, it's too long of a process. <laughs> too long. Things just, you have to start things early. Like, your mom's waking up at like <gasps> five in the morning. Just, to, it's. <sighs> It's all the long processes of stuff, and especially the drinks, when I'd be like, so can we drink it now? Nope. It's not ready yet. You gotta sit. Especially because a lot of our stuff, like, you're not even starting it cold. We gotta boil it first, and then wait for it to cool. Di oh my God, I, yeah. That's what I hated the most, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we used to start the night before. Well, yeah. actually, that's a lie. Depending on some things would be, the whole week leading up to, mm -hmm. right? Um, like for Easter, like the Easter buns, you got to start. What is it? Like Good Friday buns. Good Friday is Friday. So you got to start the process on Wednesday. Yeah. Make sure you have everything before that. Yeah, it's a, it's a long thing. I used to hate. Yes, it would be Palm Sunday. You come back from church Palm Sunday and Easter and like you're doing everything for Easter. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and another thing I hated, curtains. I hate, I hated the change of curtains. I hate curtains so much. I hate like, the buying of that. My mother still does that. The buying, the the fact that curtains were more important than like even my own life, like they were in a special, like it, mm -hmm. it was literally a trunk. I'd never, I didn't even know that they still made trunks, but like my mother had a trunk and in the trunk she said were her most prized possessions. Mm -hmm. And it was curtains. It was endless curtains. I hated, the ch I hated the change of it, even though I do miss the fact that, like, we had these things to mark our holidays. Like, we mm -hmm. knew the change of curtains was Easter and the spring cleaning and, and then Christmas curtains and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. whoo, I don't have curtains in my house, and I'm very glad. <laughs> I don't now. I used to, but it's not a yearly mm. It's not an annual situation unless I just get tired of them. My mother still does, the, my family still does the changing out of curtains. And I'll laugh because in my head, I'm like, okay, what are you doing with them after? So you'll hold on to them because you like them so much. And then eventually she'll give them to somebody else. Like if there's a trip, then we're bringing the curtains with us in the suitcases to hand off. And so like, I'll go now and I'll, oh yeah, those are curtains from 98. Or, <laughs> you know, the, they get passed down, I guess, I suppose. Um, I did not like cleaning the china cabinets and the china. Because number one, I'm like, I'm cleaning this and we're not, we're still not going to use them. Not using just them. here for decoration. I get it, but it's a chore and a half to take this basin of water and clean each and every piece of crystal. I think the only part I liked was putting it back so that I could set it up yes right? and, and sort of decorating your, yes i almost you feel almost like a fashion designer yes. of how you're going to curate all of them Precisely. going back in the cabinet mm -hmm. that was the only piece i liked but i didn't care to wash them and then god forbid i break something you know mm -mm. Shut me up. my i just never understood i agree with you i never understood us having things that we never mm -hmm. use like yep. There are plates in my parents' cabinet that, at least since I was born, have never been used. So I don't know what, what are you guys waiting for? I don't know what the special occasion is going to be. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really don't know what they're waiting for. 
I forgot about that. Like you just, you just brought that memory back of cleaning all of that. Ooh, yeah. That wasn't fun at all. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. I'm like, they've been in here. Is dust coming in here? Like, how do they get dirt? You know, it was just. How do they, they get dirt? And me. even when you're cleaning them, you're like, there's, n- there's not really anything on it. And yet I know if I don't take these all out and put them back in relatively the same way, they know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they know. But they just know. You didn't touch this cabinet. Like, how do you know? <laughs> yeah. And then if you don't put the doilies on, which is another thing. I'm like, who made these and why? Why really? are they important? Doilies are horrible. I hate all of them. <laughs> I hate them all. And my grandmother had like, I don't, you must have a special love for your doilies when you know that I've put the wrong doily somewhere because mm. they all look the same. But she's like, that is the one for the next table, not this table, this table. How do you... Wow, okay. Doilies are, <laughs> doilies are evil. <laughs> doilies are so evil. Ooh, doilies. Okay. You're bringing back some good memories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're recent, honestly. I mean, they're in the past, but I've, you know, I've come into contact with some doilies myself. Mm in the past uh actually since the fall yeah Ooh. Mm. I, can't. I don't think i'll be buying those i know that's one thing just seeing them i'm just ugh, yeah can't stand it please i have a recent question for you though mm-hmm. so we've had all these like versus battles that and they're still going yeah what would be your top three versus battles top three you know beanie and bounties first in my book Mm -hmm. um that was i literally cried watching that thing i you know what i did too especially and especially when they did the national anthem i was just like where where's this water coming from (laughs) what's happening right now (laughs) i think we we just all collectively the caribbean just felt such Mm-hmm. And then I know you're same as me. Like when you're a '90s OO baby growing up with Beanie and Bounty, especially Bounty. Woo! Oh, yeah. When what is that song? Ne- um, another level. When another level came on, mm-hmm. the one that he does with Baby Sham. That's yeah. when I shed tears because I, it took me back to my little roller skating rink mm. in Dorchester. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I want to be a kid again. Well, for some of the aspects. Um, but yeah. That was that whole, I think I watched that two, three times now. Probably go back and watch it again. I watched uh, it, yeah. I watched it when it was live. I watched it again. <laughs> and now it's kind of like a, you know what? When I'm not in a good mood, we're just going to watch Baby and Bouncy. Yeah. Like that needs to be recorded, saved for the... Well, I'm glad. It, I think it was the first one they saved, right? Like, it, I think it was the first oh. verses that they might have saved. Only because I remember... Th- being like, oh, I wish I could watch it again. And then when I went yeah, up, yeah. I was like, they saved the whole thing. I was so excited. <laughs> I was yeah. so excited. Yeah, I need that on like DVD or something, something for the future. Yeah. Um, after that, mm, ooh. I think it depends on my mood because I did enjoy Erica and Joe. I really did. But I also thoroughly enjoyed Nellie and, <laughs> and Ludacris. Um, ugh, that's hard. And then who's a, who else did some? Oh, Snoop and DMX. Snoop and DMX. This is uh, a challenge. They had Alicia Keys and John Legend. No. Um, that one didn't hit home. Who else? Um, Jermaine Dupri and Jonte Austin, I think, was one. Didn't see that. Um, that one was good only because the two of them discussed, like, the music. Yeah. Like, being able to say, like, oh, well, I wrote this when I did blah, 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 blah. Um, That's funny, because a lot of people, some people that I know didn't care for the anecdotes. I think, can we just hear to the music? (laughs) That's the thing. I think some people people want just the concert part and, Mm -hmm. like, just the music part. For me, I think depending on the artist, I want to hear 
yeah, like what was your right. take on that music or what made you write it or, or some little anecdote of like, did you know that was supposed to go to blah, blah, blah? Exactly. Like I said, it also, yeah, it depends on like your faves back in the day, but mm. I love that it's catered to us, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, okay, you know what? So definitely okay, so we got Beanie and Bounty. Bounty is number one. I'm going to say, uh, you know, I'll say, you know, no, it has to be a tie, like Erica and Jill and then <laughs> Ludacris. And no, damn it. It was Snoop. No, you know what? You know, why I didn't like the Snoop and I like Snoop and um, DMX, but it wasn't, there weren't enough hits or so. I felt like there was so much more songs that could have been included in that one. I felt like I missed some stuff like I felt like it wasn't a complete I don't know something was missing I also feel like sometimes the people they've pitted against each other um like okay like Erica and Jill I feel like if you listen to Erica you probably listen to Jill and vice versa so you Mm -hmm. know both songs Mm -hmm. with Snoop and DMX I never thought they were in the same category so I feel like listen to DMX you probably know some Snoop songs, but not as yeah. deep as Snoop lovers and vice versa. If you listen to Snoop, you don't know songs as deep as DMX lovers. Yes. So it didn't feel like a matchup sort of, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was still good. Maybe that's right. why. That That's a good, I never thought of it that way. Mm. Yeah. Are you going to watch Monica and Brandy? I am. I am. Someone sent me a link to, or they, someone else has something going on. I'm like, I've already committed to this Brandy Monica <laughs> thing. I'm going to be uh, busy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to make that. Um, but yeah. And I don't know that. Actually, yeah. I think for me, it's just the experience overall. Like, I'm not one, like, you know, Monica's going to, you know, do this and Brandy's going to do that. I think it's just, the experience um, and being taken back to, you know, being 16, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's the same for me. I want to watch it for just the experience. Cause I was never, I love them both. Mm-hmm. But I would like, ride or die for right. either of them. So yeah, it really j- is just about, Oh, I remember when that song was playing when I was younger. Um, so yeah, I think I will tune in or at least play it in the background. Yeah. And it takes away the work, like, I like the Spotify playlists that come afterwards yes. because you have all the stuff like right there. You don't have to like make your own stuff or, you know, sometimes you'll go on Spotify and, and try to find playlists already, but they don't quite, you know, that person may not have like the same song, you know, preference and love that you may have for certain ones. So um, those definitely help. I agree with you on that. Cause the Thanks. Erica and Jill playlist. Ooh, I still <laughs> I was like, even though I have all these songs, having them all together and you like in the order right. that they were played, it was just perfect. Yeah. And then even like the one I did a lot of for Snoop, right? Just going back and adding the ones that I love, you know, like mm-hmm. making an album yeah. based off of that and then adding the ones that I felt like they missed out on. Um, so speaking of reggae artists, if you were have this is so random. If you were having a backyard line, which reggae artist would you want to close out the night? Chronix or Taris Riley? This is mean. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go with Chronix because he's my mom's favorite, and um. Yeah, I'll go with Chronics. Oh, Chronics. I'll go with Chronics. I'd have him close out. Okay. I I didn't know Chronics had so much vibes. Like I saw him in um, Dominica mm-hmm. in 2018, and I just wasn't expecting yes. all of that. Because I don't think I I watched a video of his before then. I just knew the music, but when I saw him on stage, and he was up there for like two hours. And I was like, wow. Okay. Can I just say, like, shout out to the Caribbean artists that we've all come to know and love from those experiences. Like, that's another thing that I missed the most during the pandemic was going to parties 
and yeah, seeing your favorite artist, but sometimes you meet an artist for the first time from a party mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and just how they perform. You're like, I now have a new love and, and, and seeing them grow from being this small artist that just maybe just performed on their island to going to other islands and getting bigger and bigger. It's just, I love that. I love that. Agreed. Um, I think I kind of had Taris in mind because like Chronix would, you would think that he's going to put you to sleep, but he's not. He really is. Um, but Taris will like, at some point, like he can, it sounds bad, but like, right. <laughs> make everybody, you know, get them tired. And it, it's like that cleanup music. Like if you play the right Taris song. Tired enough that you, you ain't got to go home. But you, you got to get the hell out of here. Yeah. But then also put you in a mood to be like all extra lovey-dovey so that when everybody is gone, you have <laughs> you have that time with your significant But what you're other. saying is after <laughs> your after your event, I'm going to see enough people in the parking lot like, y'all, so what you say? So y'all, so what y'all doing after this little love up, little people in corners love up a little bit? Exactly. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. His voice is just... It does something, you know? There's so many of them that do something. Because even yeah. when Bounty was performing, <laughs> that did something too. <laughs> and that's why, so it, when, and then when some, I'm like, Beanie has great songs. Bounty has great songs. But when Bounty opens his mouth, it's, that's a whole nother level. I'll never forget. Like I used to, I had a lot of like male cousins growing up guy friends and some uh, bounty just had that way that like his songs hit you and you know that vibe that us women will have sometimes when you just want to be all up in a look into <laughs> my eyes tell me what you'll see and and just go off like like guys do that's what i loved like we could go off and it, oh he just has a he just brings out an energy in you yes. and it's beautiful he was in um I went to Jamaica Carnival. I gotta think, when was it? Cause this feels like we just had five years. Um, mm-hmm. Last year. And he showed up at a party that we didn't even know he was oh, gonna wow. be at. And it was, I lost my, like I lost He performed? My, he performed. Oh, damn. It was so good. It was some like beach party too. It was like end of the night and the stars mm. and they had fireworks. And I was just like, I don't wanna be anywhere else ever in my life. Like the, it was just perfect. It was perfect. Mm. I would have liked to be there. Okay, so I'm sure you've already had this asked too, but if you could, like no money, don't have to think about finances or anything, what would be the next carnival you're going to? This pandemic opens up, everything's fine. Next carnival you're at. I mean, what's the next one? Trinidad is next, so... Although I keep hearing rumors that like if this pandemic keeps going, it's just going to be for locals. But I don't see how that would make any sense because Trinis, I love you, but you're not the one spending money on masks, okay? <laughs> oh, so, I don't know how they're going to make money. But uh, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. if, in terms of time, I think with, well, okay. With finances not being an issue and the fear of catching it not being an issue, I would probably go to Trinidad. Trinidad. Even though I, I've been anti-Trinidad for a while. Not because I'm just, because it just costs, again, fine. Okay, you know what? Disregard. It would no, be it does. I'm agreeing with you. It costs so. Yeah. Because I had hung up that hat a long time, time ago. But um, it would, just because of the circumstances, I would probably try to well that and I think too when you're a like when you're a carnival baby when you're somebody that loves carnival that loves to be in a costume we want variety I mean I'm Trini and I and I've been like okay I'm tired of us going to Trinidad Carnival like can we Mm -hmm. you want different experiences and especially when you're a carnival baby like ourselves who've been to other carnivals yeah you want to keep trying new ones and it's like I can go back to Trinidad when I need to but I want to see other islands. I want to see how everybody else does it. That's so mature because a lot of people don't have that perspective. Well, they do, but they do the whole comparison thing. Um, just like you said, to see how they do it and to have 
a, the unique experiences, but a lot of people are like, oh, but it, it's not like Trinidad, and, or it's not like, yeah, it's not supposed to be. And That's it's funny because I, I actually would have people tell me that. Like, they're like, oh, I expected, because they think, like, I'm Trini. So they're like, well, most Trinis I meet are like, well, our carnival is the greatest. I'm like, well, number one, every person should think their carnival is the greatest. You, you should. And if you don't, <laughs> then I'm wondering about your patriot, like your patriots <laughs> of your country. But like, you should think it's the greatest, but I'm not going to compare it because it's apples and oranges. Like, why would I be comparing Trinidad to a Grenada carnival? It's completely different. The most I would compare is like, wow, we really were. Sometimes when I go to different carnivals, I love to see the traditions to see like how our, our colonization was similar mm-hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. I love. Like if it's like, oh, that's the character that in Trinidad we call Dam Lorraine, but you call it something different. Yes. That I love to Agreed. see our colonialty, but... I'm not comparing like Trinidad Juve to Grenada job, like the two separate things, two separate things. Yeah, I never understood that. I never understood people who would be like, well, it's not like Trinidad or it's not like crop over. It's not supposed to be at all. I'm just glad, I'm just glad that this is coming out of somebody else's mouth. Right? And sometimes I'm like, if you're going for that reason, maybe you should just stay on your island and just experience yours over and over again, if that's what you want. The final- Facts. Yeah. I didn't have any more questions. No more questions? I think I I forgot what my other question was. Yes, I had, go ahead. Always forgetting stuff. Because we just had such a good flow of conversation. Mm-hmm. Um let's see. Were you born in Canada or Trinidad? Um, I was born in Canada. And for like zero to about 14 years, we went back every year. Okay, and we yeah. stayed for quite a bit because I went to school in Trinidad. Okay. Um, which I loved. Uh, but yeah. And then <clears throat> when I got to high school. My mom was like, we're not doing all the back and forth. Mm. We'll leave you in Canada. And they would go back mm. uh, more regularly. But yeah, I was born here. Got it. So did you have those experiences where you, so like when I went, so I was born in Boston, Mm -hmm. but some months later I was shipped (laughs) to Turks (laughs) Um, and I stayed there for a little bit, but kind of like you during my, just schooling, I would go back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I say to myself, like, I don't really know. I wasn't, I don't feel like I was in Boston enough to really know, like somebody will say a street and I'm like, oh, that street sounds familiar, but I won't know where it is um, because I wasn't, I felt like I was never there. Like any summer that I had free time, um, the summer that I would have had free time to explore, I was in Turks. So my mother would pack, this was back when they used to allow barrels, the big old barrels Mm -hmm. with all my favorite things and it would come with me, um, or it would, you know, it would meet me in Turks. Did, mm-hmm. did you, did you have, were you, able, did you do that? Did we did that. And because we, my parents love to leave during winter because right. we, no. Um, <laughs> so we actually would send our Christmas barrel mm-hmm. and either it would be packed in that, or if that was too full, we'd send two barrels so that at least the Christmas one would get there by carnival right. in February or March. And then we'd have it for our stuff. But yeah, we did we did the same, like sent stuff that we needed um, in that barrel. I do feel like, you know what too though? I had a friend mention this and I think it's real for a lot of us that even though we live outside of the Caribbean, the houses we were raised in were Caribbean. Very much, yeah. So it was like, I, I understand what you mean about like the streets and stuff. I always felt like even though I'm growing up in Canada, I'm not growing up with a Canadian experience. I'm mm-hmm. growing up with a Caribbean experience because the rules, the regulations, the food, the culture, everything was Caribbean. Even if the atmosphere or the environment looked different. Yeah. yeah I, I remember it, kids are mean. Kids are mean. I think we already know this. And I remember walking home from school one day I think I was like 13 or so or I think yeah I think it was like some grade seventh eighth grade and they would like talk shit about <laughs> the uh, the outside of the house that we lived in which was like a du- a, uh, 
no, it was like, it had three levels, right? Mm-hmm. So multifamily house, we lived on like the second floor. And in my head, I'm like, oh, don't sleep. Because once you walk in this beat, <laughs> you lived in a triplex. Girl, I grew up in a triplex and that's, we live. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's how Dorchester is. It's just a lot of, you know, it, when I, when I moved from Boston, I was just like, well, where are the, te- where are the porches? Like there were no houses with like porches. No, I'm just like, what's going on here? So yeah, it was a, it was a triplex. I never even knew that that's what it was called, but yeah. um, I'm like, yeah, no, don't, don't sleep. Cause if you come inside, it's a whole palace like situation because it's my mother huge. is my mother. Our place was huge and and knowing that it was just three people actually was easier that you knew where noise came from you knew your neighbors um for us my aunt lived on the top and then the bottom Mm. was just rented out but i knew sometimes like if i got locked out of the house i can go upstairs i can go downstairs and hang out till my parents got home um but yeah i it was so i think back now because we moved when i got to about 14 or something um it was so, you're right. It was huge. That place was huge. It was a very big place. Yeah, not even huge, but just the fact that you don't know, like, don't sleep on the decoration. You know what I mean? Like, it might look this way on the outside. We don't have any control of that because we don't own the house. We're renting. But if you come inside, which you won't because we're not friends, you, <laughs> you will see. Um, the thing that I appreciate um, about having two homes in a sense is that you know you have somewhere to go and I'm learning I'm not learning I'm realizing as early as like last year I was just like oh my god like there are people who this is America right might be all they know Canada might be all that they know they don't have people elsewhere they don't have another experience to you know like in in life you know when I I was yeah, when I, when I first, like when I got to my 20s and with my friends was traveling to the States a lot more, seeing family and stuff like that, and talking to people who were, you know, Black Americans, just generational American, it, it did make me appreciate my culture because I was like, I can, I can trace back my family. That's another thing. With Caribbean, sometimes it'll be hard because if you go far enough back, some of, some of our great grandfathers had to work on other islands or people moved to other islands for different things. But Mm -hmm. most of us can find our relatives if we did the work and the effort. And I remember telling uh, a guy friend about how uh, my grand, like we'd found out all this information about my grandfather at the time, who's from Barbados. And he was like, I know my grandmother's from Mississippi, but that's about all I know. Like I couldn't Mm -hmm. go further back than that. And just knowing that I'm like, wow, they really, can't and I'm I'm grateful for the fact that I can and like you said knowing that our respective islands have always been home even when I was younger just from how your parents talk about it they say mm-hmm. we're going back home next month or we're going home um so yeah we always have this place to go back to or to recharge on and and as much as we do sometimes feel the disconnect from people who grew up there it is home and yeah. we can go back and you're right you realize there are people that really don't have anywhere to go back to like at all and it, and it made me appreciate us for that yeah at all, like you know i'm like a lot of my and then because of carnival you meet other you meet other people who have those roots and so mm-hmm. if i'm i remember being stranded in barbados my friend was like oh don't worry about it i got somewhere for you to go you know it's like we have all those things um, in common, which is cool where I have, but if I go to, I remember being at work and just realizing that my colleagues don't have, you know, this experience, like some of them, like if, if they have like, um, close connections with family in, in Ireland or something that's different. Um, but for the most part, no, oh. what Thanks. was that? <laughs> what? Yep. My camera died. That's <laughs> <what> it <laughs> I was like, everything just went dark. Because everything's dead. Okay, there we go. Mm-hmm. Technology dying. But yeah, no, I was just talking about um, folks who might have, like, people in, um, you know, my, my Caucasian friends who might have, like, um, uh, folks in Ireland. But that's, it's rare that I hear anything like that. It's just, like, my, my Caribbean um, circle, right, that yes. has that consistent 
connection. Even stuff like so many of us have family, friends who live abroad. And, and like you said, not even just from being stranded in islands, but even me being in other places. Like I've mm-hmm. been New York and Texas and, and even in the UK and always there've been either as a family member or someone who's been like, I have family there. Like, give me two seconds to, to get a phone right. call and it's fine. And rarely do you even get that. Yeah, we, I think that's special about us. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't really know every Black American, but even them, I don't think they have that connection of being able to just go anywhere and right. find someone who's going to be able to find a family member that will take you in, will feed you, will clothe you. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. We have that special connection. <laughs> Agreed. But you you mentioned something when you were saying like being a kid and being made fun of like I remember for you it was your house I remember being made fun of my food like when I was younger mm. I don't know if you were the same my mom was it took her a long time to get on the sandwich bandwagon like the sandwich as lunch bandwagon because she was <laughs> like you need food and cooked food is the best thing you could take and so I was the kid that was like heating up my lunch in the teacher's uh, room yeah. And I would, even teachers would make comments about our funny smelling food because it was curry or something, Mm -hmm. rice and peas or something. And um, yeah, I I remember feeling, and and I think that's why I pushed my mom to sandwiches so much that I was like, I want to stop being made fun of. Whereas now it's like, it's like, it's a trend now to eat. Yeah, now you're asking me what I'm eating and you want some. That's Exactly. What or my favorite is like, I've had non-Caribbeans be like, so did you try that new Caribbean place? Like their roti is the best. It is so good. <laughs> you're just like, you telling me about my food? Oh. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. Mm-mm. My mother did, she did the sandwiches actually, but they weren't, they were corned beef sandwiches. They were, mm-hmm. um, My favorite were, like, holiday leftover. Like, you got turkey turkey sandwiches, okay? (laughs) White girls would be like, what is that? that? I'm like, turkey. It doesn't look like turkey. No, this is turkey off the actual bird. (laughs) Not sliced from the deli, right. Thank you. Yeah, there was that. She did that. And egg salad sandwiches, which I forgot all about until just now. I do remember that there was this Haitian boy that I feel like it was second grade but he spilled his juice every time like he his his container you know how the lunch boxes came with the matching Mm -hmm. um the joint would never be sealed tight enough and I'm just like bruh I need you to wrap it up I it's something this this can't happen every day dribbling all over himself your stuff is getting on my stuff now oh no no (laughs) feel it properly Seal that shit up. Like, like, come on. And that's funny because you, you knew of the other Caribbean people and c- y'all kind of like stuck together in a way. Yes. Um, but yeah. Interesting. Caribbean point. was, your Caribbean friends was really like that, that model of like, we can make fun of each other, but y'all can't. Like, we'd, we'd all be sitting around like bats of little Jamaicans, da 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 da, Trini's da da da. And then that one person would walk up like, yeah, Jamaicans are, what'd you say about Jamaicans? Like, all of us are ready to fight. <laughs> and then, like, I realized growing up, like, those same, like, I'm in connection with a lot of those people. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't even know you were West Indian. Oh, who knew? You know, there's there's those, those types of uh, realizations as well. Like, oh, didn't even realize that. I feel like, a lo- I wonder if a lot of us went through the same experience of, like, my kid years weren't really, um, my kid years were me trying to fit in. So I think I tried to suppress my Caribbean Mm. side a lot. It wasn't until like, I'm a teenage, well, late teens. So 16, 17, 18, where you can go out and do stuff on your own Mm -hmm. that you get more into it. But you're right. It's like looking back and then you're like, wait a second, you were Caribbean too? I didn't even realize we didn't even share those parts of us. We really just had the commonality of like, all of our parents are strict and won't let us go anywhere. So at least, at least we can all hang out together because they're cool with that. I don't think, I don't think I started repping hard until, damn, until college. And so, and then until college and then going for the summertime, there would be Boston Carnival. And of course, like that, and you're old enough, right, to go out and do whatever you want. You ain't got really no curfew or anything like that. So that was really when 
turn up, right? Like that's when it, it really started happening. Yeah. These are good memories. It's good stuff. Yeah. Any more questions? Um I think I had one more, which mm-hmm. obviously is based around the quarantine, but what have you, what would be one thing that you say you've learned about yourself during this pandemic that maybe you didn't know before? Mm. Or something like that you, that you're proud of or have worked on, but like something that before this pandemic it wasn't even on your radar and now you're just like, I'm a boss now on this or something. So probably, uh, I think before the pandemic, I didn't realize how much I did for my brand. Um, (laughs) um, Someone recently told me, don't sleep on things nice. And I'm like, you're right. And and they (laughs) listed all of the things that I do for the brand. And I'm like, you're right. It's like, there should be no reason why that those things don't go on your resume. Well, not, maybe not like a professional resume, but a a resume geared toward a certain uh, field, right? The creative parts, like there should be no reason why that's not there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it, it made me realize, like, yeah, you do, you edit, you do content creation, you do website development, you do marketing, you do all that stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's facts. And it increased during Rona because I don't have a job, right? I'm, like, unemployed, right? So you have to, or I had to ramp everything up. Mm-hmm. So that's part of my, my brain freeze earlier was like, okay, I'm supposed to do something and I'm ready to do all this stuff. I have a list of things that I need to do, but I'm stuck. Yeah. But then, you know, it comes together. So yeah, sleeping. I think I was sleeping on the brand before, not giving it a lot of, or myself enough credit for all the things that I do. Cause it's not just one thing and you can't really compare yourself or I can't compare myself mm-hmm. to other people because most other people just do one thing, right? They're just focused on that niche or what have you. Yeah. It's, it's crazy because I, that reminds me of like something I feel like I've learned during the pandemic too, in that there are, there are like white mediocre men out there applying for jobs that they don't have qualifications for. They are confident in skills that they never went to school to learn and Mm. are getting, and like are getting these jobs and are getting, Mm the promotion and the accolades and all that. Whereas black women will be nervous or uh, on how to word like, okay, for example, I might write stories, but I don't want to call myself a writer because I haven't Mm. been public or only five people have read it and like it. And we're very fearful of even just putting that on a resume when at the end of the day, you are a writer. Like Mm -hmm. I I think, I don't remember if it was like Shonda Rhimes or Ava DuVernay that was just like, if you're doing it, then you are that. Like right. if you that, and you, we have every right to put that on our resumes as well and say, yeah, I write and I've been doing it for five months. Mm-hmm. What? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's realizing like, oh my God, I really do do all these, especially when, I don't know if you're the same, but a lot of things I won't realize have a name for it. Yeah. So I'll be like, oh yeah, well, I make my own posts and I do the videos and stuff like that. And someone will be like, you realize you're doing marketing. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. So then that's what it is. But we're so, we, we may not even know the words that we're just like, oh, I'm just doing little videos. It's not a big deal. Where someone's like, do you realize people pay somebody to edit it and cut it that way and put these images in and you're doing it all on your mm-hmm. own and still not listing it or telling mm-hmm. people. It. And it's not to say that you want to, um, do it for others or sell it or make it into a business but yeah you deserve to big up yourself and be like I do this and what mm-hmm. yeah that's, that's one of the things I did today I went I looked up different uh, positions like I looked up web develop developer and I looked up um, some other something and I took the job descriptions copied and pasted what I do mm-hmm. for the brand so that I can I think it helps you articulate what you do right and so in those moments where you need to pitch yourself 
you have, you can eloquently state what you do yeah. and not just in a way that um, is mediocre, right? So it's like, oh yeah, I make pictures. No, you're an illustrator. <laughs> yeah. You know, you do illustration. Um, so yeah. I, that's a smart tip though, like to really look up the job that you think you're mm-hmm. doing or just any jobs that fall into that, see what their qualifications are. And mm-hmm. That's what you do. Because even for like, I used to do that with, um, when I would apply to a job and I get it, because hopefully, at least back in the day, they never used to take down the job ad just right away when you got a job. Mm-hmm. So I would copy the whole ad and that's what I put right. in my resume. Like, sure. I d- you hired me to do all of this, then this is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And tweak it as you go along. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> So before we go, just share with everybody where they can find you, Instagram, all your tabs. Uh, and- okay, you can find me on Instagram at andisdat, all one word. Um, I'm on Twitter, andisdat, and the podcast is on anywhere you listen to podcasts, uh, you can find it. And is that I-Z-D-A-T, because of course it says just like a Caribbean person. <laughs> So, oh, I think I have another question. Um, oh, crap. Is it just me? Like, I feel like there should be a, I hate that I say the same thing. You can find it on all your platforms. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, there's got to be a different way. There's got to be a smoother way to, to, to inform people of where they can find the podcast. But I, I get it because it's on so many different platforms like Spotify. It's, and it's tough because you want to say, like even when I first started and like I post on Anchor. Mm-hmm. F- people were like, well, I don't use Anchor. I have a Samsung yeah. phone. I have iPhone. I'm listening on iTunes. So yeah, it it almost feels like the, it's sad, but the easiest way is just like, wherever you listen to podcasts, right. you will find me. <laughs> wherever y'all listen. I mean, for me personally, like you, I am a Spotify girl. So I'm usually like, if you got Anchor, great. But if not, Spotify. (laughs) Spotify is irking me because it hasn't been updating my episodes. So I've been going elsewhere. Like, I mean, I do SoundCloud, but still, Mm -hmm. I'm just like, why? Like for the Spotify people, they probably think that I haven't posted anything in a minute. And I think since Rona. It hasn't been updating, Ooh. which is annoying. But anyway, I'll figure That's it out. Fine. All right, darling. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so good You're talking to you. Welcome. This was fun. Yeah. All right, girl. Enjoy Bye. your night. You too. Bye. Bye.